European market is uh, quite huge and not the easy as you might think. Um, in Europe, we have several countries and they are completely different. So if you do not have a title like a Clash of Clans or um, a King Candy Crush, where you easily can reach tons of users, you really have to take care of every single country by his own. So it's a really um, hard challenge um, to go in and step in. So I try to give you a quick snapshot what is possible to squeeze in in 20 minutes. Um, really a top view with, with um, several basics um, they can, uh, they need to take care of because we have such a fragmentation on, on the culture or even on the technology on the internet broadband which is available in Europe. And also um, quite important fact for me is uh, the income so of every user in Europe. So it's not one fits all. Um, there's a wide brand. So I really try to um, give you a quick insight on uh, what's possible. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for the nice introduction. Um, I do not repeat it, and I jump over. Um, I have a question for you guys. Um, what do you think in the European Parliament, so which is the top parliament in Europe, um, how many languages are officially used there for the daily communication, for uh, the paperwork, doing their meetings, and all the stuff? So, Please lift your hands if you have an idea. Is it one, three, or 24? So who thinks one language? And three? So 24, I guess all the rest. Um, it's 24, actually. So the European Parliament um, translates every single paper in all the languages of the countries who are members of the European Union. Because it's some kind of basic law in Europe that your language is not your barrier to join the European Parliament as a European. So if you only speak one language, you can join the European Parliament because everything will be translated for you. And 25% of the budget in the European Parliament will be spent just for translation. So which is super weird. But that's not all. All over also outside the European Union, we have more than 150 languages in Europe. Um, you really have to take care that there are so many different language cultures and also interactions that the people completely um, yeah, translate and also yeah, it can happen that you at some certain point um, lost in translation and uh, like I mentioned that completely the um, message that you sent got the wrong uh, information at the end. Which brings me to my next topic, the different culture in Europe. Um, for example, the Swedish people, um, if you talk about events and games and all the stuff, Sweden uh, got every year during the summertime the Midsummer Fest. So it's the most important um, celebration after Christmas for them. And um, after this important day, they really escape the cities and the country is nearly closed for around about four weeks. Talking about close, in Spain, for example, every day um, shops go closed down from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, they're doing this typical siesta thing and um, um, they're, yeah, they completely country rest for average two hours. But What's quite important in Europe is our music. So every year you got the proof um, that we love music, the Europeans, but the music in Europe is so different from all the countries. So we got the Eurovision Song Contest every year and is uh, viewed to more than 200 million viewers worldwide. And the difference there from the music style can't be more um, yeah. stranger than it is. So for example, um, the monster um, from the right-hand side is the winner of the 2008 contest. It's Lordi from Finland. And talking about also weird things brings me to Germany. Germany, for example, hates credit cards. Um, in Germany, only 6% of every transaction 
is made with a credit card. For example, here in the UK, 30% are made with credit cards. And more than 50% in Germany is still made with cash. So the Germans love cash at all. And uh, this is also something that you need to think about when you think about mobile payment. For example, with Apple, it's still active since 2015 in the United Kingdom. Several other companies, uh, countries follow, like Switzerland and France, and even Russia, its life since 2016. But still, Germany, Poland, and the Netherlands are missing there. So it is, for me, a completely weird thing, because I love to pay with my mobile, I love to pay um, with my credit card online everywhere. Regarding the currency, so we have in a lot of countries the euro. Do we use the euro everywhere? No, not at all, because we have 24 more different currencies which they use in Europe. And Jack is back again. Um, so we have a total uh, 24, which also covers the British pound, the Russian ruble, or even the Swedish crown. And if we have a look, which also jump on, brings me to the income in Europe. There's a wide gap in the different countries. So you can't compare um, the money which is available from every single user. So if you look at the top countries like Switzerland and Luxembourg, there's a yearly income of nearly 100,000 euros. But on the bottom, you have Bulgaria and Moldavia with eight or two K. And in the middle, there are big five, um, Germany, United Kingdom, France, and Italy. So if I compare two countries, Germany and Bulgaria, so the income in Germany is five times higher in, Bulgaria, uh, in Germany than in uh, comparison to Bulgaria. If we look at the um, mobile costs in Europe, and if you compare these two countries, you see that they are nearly equal, even that the costs in Bulgaria are three euros higher per month um, than in Germany. So, and you might think, okay, then the quality of the internet might be equal as well. No. If you look uh, on the whole European um, charts, Germany is really, really far away from Bulgaria. So, Bulgaria got a quite faster internet, and even the mobile coverage is might much stronger than in comparison to uh, Germany. So Germany got a really, really problem and also is really in trouble regarding um, the mobile coverage and also regarding the mobile um, download speed. So, and if you're in trouble, you need a Harvey Specter. Um, Harvey Specter will help you maybe not on the um, mobile coverage, but maybe on the legal system. And also there, the legal system is really fragmented in Germany. Taking um, the example um, with Europe, no, uh, taking the example with Europe, I have Germany here. You have, if you have a problem and you go to in front of a court, you have to, for example, five different stages that you have to fulfill over the years until you reach the end with the European Court of Justice. And it can take you on every single stage um, more than years to fulfill them. So there's a difference. It can be five stages per country. It can be three stages. So it's really different from country to country, and you have to look on every single one. So if you have a problem in one country, you have to solve it there and jump onto the next one. And this is really, if you compare it with all these challenges, quite hard in Europe. So my top takeaways are here at the talk is localization is the key. There are a lot of languages out there. Culture differences are larger than you might think. European payments are not 100% based uh, on the euro. There is a wide income gap uh, between the European countries. And even a strong economy do not really automatic feature the best internet infrastructure. So also, again, there, you think about if you 
game, for example, is not um, yeah, big or small enough to download it via the internet, and everyone, for example, in Germany thinks about, okay, should I download it or not? And every country in Europe has its own legal system, so it's quite important there that you really think about what's yeah, possible or not if you go in front of the court. Thank you.